Mr. Grinch, you really are a dear. You're as cuddly as... All right, enough of the Christmas music. There is no better time of the year than, than Christmas time, and especially to be uh, down here building planes at that time. So um, no better time to be in the hobby. This is uh, day three of our free wing motion RC AL37 airliner. So uh, not really the third day we're working on this, but really what it is is the third chance I've had to get down here to it. So um, welcome. Thanks for coming back to join me for this third day. If you haven't already, uh, smash the like button for me and subscribe. I've had a lot of really great conversations with people in the last couple of days, people making comments and asking questions. And hey, there's just been no better time to be part of this hobby. Amazing products, cool things coming out, technology changes, and, and on top of it off the... Um, you know, to top it off the blowing up of the internet, it, the access to information that you have at your fingertips to learn how to do stuff is absolutely amazing. So I want to take a, a few minutes. I'm going to share with you where I am. Um, some of the things that I can, I can give you if you haven't thought of already, uh, I got some great ideas. So shout out to Bud Harvey, loved his idea of the light up in the cockpit. So we'll, uh, we'll have to work at getting an led up there. I think that was a really cool idea. So a shout out to him and, you know, many others that come up with some of these ideas and, you know, sharing your airliners and your pictures and your refinishes. It's, it's such a cool time right now to get to see that stuff from all over the country. So, um, a couple updates from, from where we ended up. So, uh, as you can see, we have the beer cooler painted. So we're getting closer. Um, a couple things I'll show you as we, uh, take a look at this thing that we were talking about the last time. So on the last video, we talked about the spacing that's in there. I filled that in and puttied it, sanded just a little bit, and uh, got this thing painted. That turned out uh, really, really good. Very happy with the result there. And also the wings, we got those things filled in and they're ready to get some touch up paint as well in there. So I initially thought that the tape was uh, to cover those up. It turns out it's not. So what that tape was, Motion RC actually, um, they, they sent me a message on one of my, my videos and they said, hey, just so you know, these pieces of tape were meant to go around the fuselage and, and cover up those gaps. So again, your preference, I prefer not to um, use the tape. So uh, as we get ready to finish this, I'll, as I go through a couple things, we'll skip through then into the time lapse and you can watch it, but hopefully I can get pieces put together. Uh, as you know, I lose sleep over decisions like this. I've been debating forever now What what color am I going to paint these wings? So after I masked off the whole fuselage and I have that painted Now it came down to doing the wings and I debated and debated and it was gonna be gray made my mind up It was gonna be gray and uh, I initially wanted the blue just like this one I went away from that and I'm like I'm gonna go gray so I started doing some research on the internet and looking for this model and, and searching by the registration numbers and all the pictures that people have. And needless to say, uh, I found one picture with so much as the flaps in the down position and I could see the top. No pictures of the top of the wing anywhere. I was able to find a picture of the flap and it's white. I know the belly's white. I know the bottom of the wing is white. So with the flaps being white, that tells me that the wings and the tail, they're white. So that makes it easy for me because I'm just going to leave these like they are. Uh, the whole plane will get a finish with uh, water, water-based minwax at the end to make it uh, clear coat over all the decals, make it pop a little bit more, but we're going to leave these white. So that's where I stand. I'm not going to lose sleep over this anymore. Final decision, those are going to be white. And showed you the sanding there for them. So um, as we mask this off, you could see that we had a couple spots here right in the very center. I didn't lose much paint other than that. So um, that's not hateful. It's not the end of the world. We're going to fix that up. So uh, ran over to Home Depot and had them mix me up a, a jar of their finest 2019 uh, eggshell colored white. So um, three bucks. Started a post on Facebook today also um, trying to reach out to Motion RC. I think it would be cool when you buy these models if you can buy little bottles of touch-up paint. I know it's hard for them to compete with the pricing when this stuff is so easy and believe it or not that they, they really do a great job of matching colors. So Home Depot or Lowe's, I've gone to both. They're about the same. Three to five dollars for a jar of this stuff. This will last you for absolutely ever. It's probably overkill to be honest. But um, 
I'd like to see motion at least, you know, they put it in a jar. It just makes it easy because I don't really live close to one. So I have to make a trip out of the way to go get there. So that's, um, that's that on the touch up paint. We'll be installing the receiver tonight and satellite. So we're going with the uh, Spectrum, the AR8010T for telemetry. So genuine, spect uh, genuine Spectrum products in there. Um, I fly with a, a DX9 Spectrum radio. So for this one, I want to make sure that uh, I don't have any issues. And that's just my choice. I usually went with orange receivers and things. Um, some cheaper models. This one's more expensive, more time in. My invested time. So to me, I want to make sure that we have no issues so a um, couple things that uh, we're going to do to this tonight in the time lapse one of the the first ones is going to be as we got my rudder finished if you can see this um, I actually trim this out with uh, an aluminum tape so this is AC ductwork tape that they use for heating ventilation and air conditioning I absolutely love the way that this looks over the blue and the white um, gives it a really, really scale look and feel to it. It brings out some of the texture underneath it, but not too much. So um, you can see how that's really going to stand out there. So I'm going to give you um, just a little preview on how I go about doing that. So I'm going to set this off to the side over here. So this is this is a roll of this stuff. You can buy at the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. It'll last you absolutely forever. This is called Sure Tape. So basically all I do is I try not to wrinkle it. You don't want to wrinkle it or abuse it. So if you did and you got a bunch of it messed up, just pull it off, cut it. Um, so I lay this out. I measure the piece that I want. So on here on my, my vertical stab, you see that this end is wider than down here. So if we just cut one even strip, it's going to look ugly down here at the end. So you have to taper it as you go there. Uh, I pre-measured this. So I know I want to do 14 inches. It's going to run it just a little bit off the end of the stab. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I have my cutting mat here. I'm gonna take this and lay this thing out. We're gonna go to, to 14 inches with it. And I have myself a straight edge. We'll take the straight edge and lay this across here. And I use a fabric knife. You can get these at Walmart. Um, Push a little button in there, security thing, fabric roller knife, work great. Better than an X-Acto knife because you'll drag it and it'll be all jaggedy edge. So you take this thing, you open it up at the end, simply put it along your straight edge and simply roll it. And you get a really, really nice cut. So now that we have that, we can set this off to the side. I'm going to make this um, one inch wide at one side, three quarters at the other. So all I simply do is now I use an X-Acto knife and I lay this out. You can use a tape measure or whatever. I'm going to mark it for one inch and I just make a very small cut there. And there. Lay my straight edge back over these now. There. And we will roll this right along the edge. So, very clean cut, one inch is wide. So, now what I need to do is I need to trim it down to three quarters at the one edge. So, I'm going to take an eighth off of each end down here. And simply mark it. And I'm going to go from this edge to the little slice I made here. Again, use my roller. Keeping good pressure. Cut the little excess off. That gets thrown out. And we will throw that end off. So now what we have is a pretty nice cut. Um, I now take a Sharpie. Get rid of the scraps so they don't get tangled up in there. And I am going to find the center of each end. 
and I'm going to mark it. Just with a little indentation, a little line. Now, the super cool part of this is, is that there's lines right in the center of all of these airfoils. So you know exactly where to line those marks up. So I am just literally going to take this piece off. I am going to get the thinner part down here at this end, there, thicker end up here, right there at the very beginning, on that line. I'm going to run this all the way down to there, okay? So um, you want to try and not fold this up too much because then it's going to be wrinkly and it's not going to look very good. So when you do this, you want to try and keep it, get your fat edge worked over like this. Find the piece where you want to put it, line your marks up. There. We're going to peel that down. I don't want to stretch this. I want to make it nice and taut. And tack your other mark right in the center. So from there, now you can work your finger straight down the edge to there. Really rub it down. And now I just start from that center and just use a little bit of thumb pressure. Just keep working my way, almost like you're working out the air pockets and the bubbles. And as you get to the end, if you start to get any little creases, work the creases out. And the really cool part is you'll get to the rivets and I'll leave the little rivet details in there for you. but it gives it just a little bit of that warped kind of aluminum look. Flip it to the other side, going back to the center. Just some decent finger pressure. Now I'm gonna work my way to the edge like that. And once you have it, you can really work that thing like that and there you have a an awesome metal finished edge super super easy super awesome detail to that look at that thing that is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so this one i'll actually fold over and i'll cut that angle so we'll do that we'll do that later very inexpensive very uh very easy to make those details super cool so um let's set this off to the side so the next thing i want to show you is going to be if you want to paint your nose oblong objects like this not round circles if you want to paint round circles here's a um a different trick we can get these blue rags you can simply rip one of these off lay this thing down on your lay it down on your mat on your table and you can use your fabric roller again and just cut cut some strips like this, let's get that one. A bit, a piece of junk there on the end. But anyway, nice pressure all the way down. So you can take one of these strips, just get a little bit of water on there. Just enough to make it wet. You don't want it falling apart. You want to you can also dip lightly down through there you can fold it just to help get it nice and wet now from here if you wanted to make lines simply lay this thing i'll pull this fuselage back over hopefully you see that so you can just literally lay this wet blue towel right over where you want to mask a little bit of finger pressure just push it down perfectly sealed now you can spray paint lines around big red objects like that make them pretty nice and neat so we'll throw that off to the side. So for me, I got to paint this oblong nose. That doesn't work real well. So I'm going to flip this over because I still need to shoot the bottom side. So who never said, whoever said 
arts and crafts won't come in handy as you get older, they lied. So here's the cool part. We're going to take, um, first off, I'm going to take a couple of these blue rags and um, we're going to wet them. And I'll show you why. So I'm just going to dip these slightly in the water. And I'm just going to squeeze them all to get them all a little bit wet. Gives it some, gives it some weight. Because the rule of spray painting is wherever you don't want spray paint, you'll get spray paint if you don't mask it off. So all I'm simply going to do is wrap these around my fuselage. Like so. Like that. We got another one. Just slightly damp it. Wring it out. Again, just putting some weight to cover some stuff up. Like this. Here. Now, remember in arts and crafts I used to make snowflakes? Take the paper. No two snowflakes are the same. You can make all these the same. So take that, fold that in half. We're going to take it and fold it in half again. Like this. Make a corner. And now get a little pair of scissors. Take your scissors like this. And you're going to cut right there at that corner. Just how I used to make snowflakes. Like that. And now we're going to open this up. You got yourself a hole. These blue rags are nice because they will literally stretch however you want them to stretch. So basically I can take this one and outline the area that I want to make yellow. If it's the wrong size, maybe this one's a little bit big for me. Um, throw it away. Make another one. Make it to fit. So you want to be able to pull it and you want it taunt. And then I'll show you why. So we'll cut this one just a little bit smaller. So I hope everybody had a good week at work. Um, work's been a long couple days. That's why it's been a couple days since I've been, I've been down here. Gives the fuselage chance to dry anyway. Um, but I, I don't know about you guys, but every day I just can't wait to get home from, from work to work on this thing. So outline the area that you want by stretching it with the blue towel. And then just simply wet the edge. All right, guys, um, so really quick. So just trimming off all these aluminum edges. This is turning out really good. Uh, it takes a little bit with the bigger wings and the little winglets on there, but that, that looks awesome. So um, one thing else I wanted to, to point out here when we're looking on the inside of the wings, you have to remove these pieces in order to fish the wires through and then you re-bolt them. I've learned not to trust things that I can't see. So with that, what I mean is all these connectors, um, Will they come loose over time with vibration and wings on and off this thing? I don't know, maybe. So all I simply do is take a little bead of hot glue and I run the hot glue right along the very end of the connector so it secures it. That thing will never come back out from vibration. And all the connectors in the tail that you're never going to take apart after I put them together, yes, they have locks and things like that you can use. I try and save a little bit of weight there, talking grams. I just use some electrical tape to wrap around the ends. That way you know it's never going to come off. So... Um, Still plugging away. We got the tail done. Got the left wing done here, ready to attach that. Um, so I'm going to set that off to the side and I'll get working on uh, the other one. Got to change the batteries in the GoPro, uh, refill on the drink, and still kicking Christmas music.
All right, here guys, something else as we go back together. So if you wanna make it easier to get your wings and stuff on and off all these carbon tubes, just take some sandpaper and just chamfer the edges. It gives it a guide. Just a little trip, little tip to make it a little bit easier here as uh, we go together with the last pieces. All right. All right, guys. Um, so we're done for the night. It's uh, pretty late. I got everything done here on this thing that I wanted to do. Uh, it's pretty much well assembled, touched up, painted, um, electronics roughly installed and uh, bound. So a couple things here that I'm going to go over with you just real quick. So if you've never uh, calibrated your ESCs, um, I'll go through that here with you really quick. When I powered this thing on, I had uh, one motor that would work and I have one that was beeping, beep, 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 and wouldn't power up. Uh, I recalibrated, I checked all the connections, it was good. I went to do the calibration process and that fixed it. So uh, I'm gonna flip you around here real quick and we'll take a look. So we'll go ahead and remove the, the hatch off to look inside of here. So we got the Velcro down in there, make sure that we hold the battery. This thing's just thrown in here for now. Um, get our electrical connector here. So first thing you wanna do is we're gonna power on the radio. Again, Spectrum DX9. We're going to turn this throttle trim all the way down to the bottom. So once the radio is on, you're going to go ahead and turn that all the way up, throttle all the way up. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to plug this thing in. And once you do this, you're going to hear two beeps. And then after the two beeps, then you want to throttle it back down. So you have to bear with me here, doing this with one hand, trying to hold this GoPro. So there's the beeps, throttle down. Six beeps, let you know six cells. And now we're powered up and ready to go. So, <laughs> thing sounds amazing. So anyway, you can look and see the trim trim turned out awesome up on the winglets and down there we'll flip over to the horizontal stabs that stuff looks good so tomorrow we're ready for some cali graphics hook up the linkages i haven't done any of the linkages yet that shouldn't take long and uh we still have all the masking on because i'm going to clear coat it with the minwax and uh Got a couple little graphics yet that Callie's sending me that I missed on the first batch of stuff I sent her. So that's coming right around the corner, but we're getting close, 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 close. All right, guys, have a great night.